Now we're going to install our liner O-rings. Um, we need to make sure that our liners are perfectly clean. He's got a little crud in them. Um, you can take them to the a solvent tank, um, some brake clean. Um, you could run them through the hot water washer if you wanted to. Just got to make sure you get them out because it'll rust the liners themselves. Um, you see in here there's some fingerprints I want to get wiped out of there. Um, okay, so when you put your liner O-rings on, this one goes first. It sits right there. This one's not directional. You want to make sure that you don't roll them. You want to walk them on like so. If you actually roll them on, you will um, actually destroy the, well, it, it, it makes the O-ring bigger and it won't fit. We take our D-ring. It's got like a D shape to it, you can kind of see. We're going to do the same thing with it. We're going to walk it on. We're not going to roll it on. If you walk it on, it's not a good thing. Um, like I said, it will actually swell the liner up and your piston won't fit. So we're going to roll, not roll, we're going to walk this on. Okay. Then I'm going to lube it up with some Siliglide. This is all rust from running water in these engines. Um, right down here, you can see it's kind of dirty. We need to clean that up yet. Just a little bit, make sure that's clean. Take a buffer to it, something like that. Same thing over here. This one I've already changed the O-rings on. Okay, what I'm going to do is, this one calls for uh, Vaseline, uh, which is this Siliglide stuff. Um, something you want to be really careful of depending on the engine you're working on. Uh, some engines will take coolant, some will take uh, engine oil. Um, John Deere likes to use soap. Um, a couple of different types of lubes that they'll use on this. So you want to get that good and gooey, good and slicked up. Do the same thing on this one. Uh, a lot of guys will beat these in. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I will show you the easiest, best way to do this. Um, okay, so that's all good to go there. Now we're going to come over here down in the engine block itself, down in the bore here. There is two grooves here and let's look here. This little plug, what that's for is to tell if there's coolant leaking between the O-rings. We need to make sure this is all perfectly clean, no crud in it, that type of thing. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to come down here after I've cleaned this, and I've cleaned this up. It looks pretty rusty. Um, um, that would typically be due to taking care of your coolant. So we're going to do the same thing down here. Make sure we get it nice and slick in there so that the O-rings don't catch when we uh, put the liners in. Okay, so this, this one's marked number one. So that goes right here. We're going to set him down in here. Being careful not to catch the edges. Okay. Now, notice it doesn't go down real easy. What I've done is I took a head bolt and I went and found some shorter bolts. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to start this on one of my holes right here. Okay. I'm going to set this here like so. I'm going to use a heel bar of sorts. I put the washer on there just to help. But basically, I'm going to pry this down in here like so. I can kind of feel it pop in. So we're good to go on that one. 
we're going to go to the next one. Put the next one in. Like I say, make sure it doesn't drag as we go in. You can kind of see where it's sticking up there now. Same thing with this one. Going to find a bolt hole here. Hit the camera where you can see what I'm doing. Take a block of wood again. And where you can see good what I'm doing. Okay, so you see what I do there, and as I pull it in, careful it doesn't slip off on you. that down in there and we're good to go okay now the next thing is we need to check our liner protrusion we can do it with the tool like this it's got this cup and it sits down in the liner and we'd use head bolts to bolt it down what that's going to do is hold that liner down because it will actually bounce up <coughs> when we go to measure it. <coughs> if you don't have that, can you use a couple of long bolts like this, or short bolts, I'm sorry. You can kind of see how that catches the edge of that liner basically what I'll do is I'll snug those down don't necessarily need to go to full head bolt torque I'm going to snug these down because every but nobody has the tool usually right next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our sled gauge which is right here going to do is we're going to bring it up here on the flat surface of the block. We're going to zero the indicator. Zoom in maybe. Okay. Anyways, you can see the indicator there is at zero. We're going to slide that over here and you can see that moved. We've got about four thousandths of an inch. Got to hold it down tight. Zero it. Looks like we've got about four thousandths liner protrusion. I want to check it there, there, check it there, about four thousandths there, and then one more spot I want to come. Say there ish. Looks like I got about five on that one. So you can kind of see, you know, there's zero. There's five thousandths. Now I'd look in the book and it's going to tell me that I need to have so much, or I can only have so much protrusion. What could have happened is we could have had crap in the. Um, uh, counter bore of the liner um, you know you can if, if you have to adjust that usually you do it with shims okay I'm looking up my cylinder liner protrusion here you can see the the tool that they call for and they use a sled gauge just like we just did uh, basically put that on you torque it to 44 foot-pounds and check your liner protrusion Okay, then we're going to come over here and it says allowable liner protrusion is zero to three thousandths of an inch with no more than two thousandths variation between any two adjacent cylinders. 
Uh, the specs are listed in Table 1-16, so that would be in the back of the book. Um, so we read four. So what I'm going to say is uh, I don't have those held in there tight enough from the last measurement we just did. So let's check the other one. We'll actually use the tool on this one and see what it does. Tool, and it, if you'll notice, it says cooler side. The oil cooler is on this side. So this is going to bolt on like so. Okay, I'm going to get a couple of head bolts. Bolts are gross, so I'm going to have to clean them up first, looks like. That's peanut butter on there is what you're seeing. Anyways, so we're going to put these in here. You typically don't want to be careful with the impact gun, because that could, if there was crap in my holes here, right in here, that could actually crack the block, so you got to be careful. Okay, torqued, right? Okay, now what I'm going to have to do is get my sled gauge and come up here and do the same thing I did over there, make sure everything's clean. And this is tough because of this tool, this does not fit with this sucker in there. Um, but I did measure it with something else and we were at two thousandths on this one. I was at three thousandths on this one, so that makes that good to go. Um, but you can see how, you know, obviously you may not have this tool, but using this would do the same thing. Probably why I'm reading so goofy here is I need some wider washers to actually push it in farther. 